how to find my name. Hey, so right there, right in front of you. Good to see you. I'm Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Okay, we are now joined by uh, the head coach of the Wolfpack of NC State, Coach Keats. Would you like to make an opening statement or go straight to questions? Uh, let's go straight to questions, if you don't mind. I'm good with that. Coach, first question is on your right here on the aisle. Okay. Uh, coach, Dan Walken, USA Today. Why weren't you guys better this year? <laughs> you know, uh, I think we had our moments. And if you look at our team in different segments, you would say, man, they were good. You know, we remember we started off the ACC um, season five and one, and then I think we had a couple of rough spots. And you know, it's weird. We, we we brought in eight different guys, and I think it took a little longer than I thought. We like we played well early, and then in between, I thought we were just okay. And then we kind of find our found our stride once we got into March a little bit. So it's weird. Um, it's a good question, but like I said, we we had some moments, and and then. We kind of turned it around, but when you look at, you know, our 20-game schedule, every game that we lost, probably outside of one or two, we were in it. And what we had to do is we had to clean up some of the things we didn't do well, and obviously we got better. Yes, go ahead. What what is it? Do you think that in in the current transfer environment, that we might see more teams like yours that don't really get it all together until you know the last possible minute absolutely i mean you think about it it and, and here's here's a difference in my team last year and this year we had a bunch of transfers the previous year but we had an opportunity to play a foreign game which gave us 10 practices and when you get those 10 practices they mean a lot in the summertime and then to go over and play against some national teams and everything else i think that really helped that team uh, but when you just start you know, when basketball starts and you got a bunch of new dudes, it, it takes a long time. And especially when it's from your guards. You know, if you got returning guards, I think it makes a lot of difference. But in our situation, we lost to Quavion Smith and Jaquel Joyner, who both, you know, that was 34 points a game for us. And so it took us a while to get to where we are. Coach, next question will be on your right by the uh, Black Curtain. The Richmond Times Dispatch. Kevin, you've got a center who looks like a left tackle, a point guard who is a lacrosse All-American, a forward who's fasting for Ramadan. Is this as unique a team as you've ever had, and how did it come together? See, B DJ Burns would think he's a tight end. You can't say left tackle. That's not right. You know, um, it, it makes for a great story, and it does. I mean, we, you know, when you look at, you know, teams are in the Sweet 16, you always try to figure out how did they get here. Well, we won. We got here because we're very unique. I want you to think about this. Um, we've got a traditional old school back to the basket post guy who can score. Most teams don't have that. Uh, we're starting a, a point guard who is a legitimate point guard. Most teams have, you know, kind of a combo guard as we've had in the past. And then we've got a lot of good pieces around it. And you know, we've got a six-one combo guard and DJ Horn who could really scare the, score the basketball. And so I think one of the things that's helped us out is because we're different, it's actually helped us. Like how, how often are you going to play against a, a post guy that's a lefty with a great touch that can really pass out the double team? And Michael O'Connor has become, you know, a, a scorer. You look at him in the early games, you're like, man, he's just a passer, 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 and his numbers don't support it. Um, you know, give our Assistant coaches, a lot of credit. I think the development of some of these guys late in the year has really helped us become uh, a good team and, and has gotten, gotten us to this point so far. Okay, here in the middle, left side. Hey, Coach uh, Scott Gradsky, CBS Milwaukee. You mentioned the importance of experience at guards with Marquette. They have two who've been together for three years, and Cam Jones and Tyler Kolek. What kind of a challenge do they present? Man, those guys are really good. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out which one's better. And I know that's not fair to them, but they, they complement each other in, in different ways. And, you know, both uh, get to the left hand is really good and talented. And that's a, that's a major challenge for us because in order for us to have success, we've got to do a good job of controlling those guys. And um, they, play, they play extremely well. They play extremely well together. Um, they're older. They understand they have played together. And that's something that you can't substitute. And so top of our scouting report is those two guys. But when I say that, Marquette is so much more than just the, the guard play. They've got good play all over the floor. Okay, on the front row, left side. 
Kyle Boone, CBS Sports. Um, you guys lost seven of your last nine regular season games. I think it's fair to say probably on the hot seat entering kind of the postseason. You guys go on a crazy run, five wins, five days of the ACC tournament. What changed for you guys? You know, what changed, it's weird. And, and, and like I told you, it's so many great storylines. Seven, what did you say, seven of our last eight? Seven of our last nine, and now we won seven of seven. And the crazy thing about it is every game that we have won uh, of our seven was elimination game. If we lose any of those games in the ACC, we don't go to the NCAA tournament. And then your two teams that get to the Sweet 16, you lose them, you go home. What changed? Uh, we got smarter. Uh, we got the same players who are playing with a little bit more confidence. But when we went back, and I start with the ACC, and we went back and we looked at every team that we lost to, it didn't have a lot to do with them. It was more about what we didn't do, uh, understanding scouting reports. Um, we had segments in each game where I thought if we played well enough, we would have won the game, but breakdowns and everything else. And so what we talked about going into the ACC tournament and this tournament is let's limit our mistakes and let's stay locked in. And a lot of them was, you know, transition defense, ball screen coverage, things that you could clean up. You know, things that, you know, you don't want to have major league problems where you just can't play. We didn't have that problem because we were good enough to win games. We had problems that you could solve. And honestly, to their credit, um, we grew up in scouting reports and our fin work became better and they understood what we needed to do not to beat ourselves. Okay, again. Boo Corrigan asked at the, after the ACC tournament uh, kind of what he saw in this team, following this team. He, he described it as unwavering. How would you describe this team as, and, and they, they're resolved on the stretch of the season? You know, I haven't had time to really, you know, reflect on what we've done. And because I'm so much in the moment of it. But I was sitting in the bed late last night after watching film. And I was like, man, we just, you know, we won five games in five days against five national champions. And, you know, it, it was weird because we got stronger and better in the, each second half. And we looked like, you know, one of the fresher teams. We looked like we'd had two or three days rest. Uh, I just – this team just believes. Um, the energy is high. Uh, we having fun. We talked about, you know, going to both tournaments, the ACC and this tournament, and having a lot of fun. And we've been able to stay in the moment. And what I mean by that is we never look past the next opponent. And if we're fortunate enough to move on, we are. Um, but, you know, we talked about, you know, being together, trusting. You know, our, our culture is what we call art, A-R-T-T, -T, uh, accountability, relentless, toughness, and doing it together. And any time that, you know, in this stretch where we didn't feel like that we were providing our culture, um, we've talked about that. We've leaned on it. We've leaned in on it. And we've done a good job with it. So I, all of the heavy lifting has to go to those guys because they, they've helped make, made the switch. And, you know, we just pull the right strings. Yep. Hey, let's move on uh, the right side of coach here toward the front. Back to the topic of transfers. Uh, a year ago at this time, you guys were home. You obviously made a lot of transfer moves. How do you feel with the portal being open at this time of year while you're focusing on the game and also trying to deal with that, knowing you have a lot of roster turnover coming? I don't like it now. Uh, and I can't even say how I liked it last year because of the fact that we probably were recruiting. But I will say this. Um, I, I do know that the portal has to open at some point. Um, if I was a new coach taking a job somewhere else, I would love for the portal to be open right now. If I was at home, I would like for it to be open. I'm in the Sweet 16, so I hate that it's open. Um, that being said, I think we have to get small windows. Um, maybe keep it open two or three days out of the week. And, you know, certain days may be closed. But I, I do think it's a little unfair for teams who have worked their butt off to get to a certain point. And they, you know, for me, example, I got no choice. I love the recruiting part of it. But I've got to concentrate on Marquette. But any other time, I've got to get on the phone and try to figure out who can we replace, you know, DJ Horn, DJ Burns, Casey Morsell. And I'm doing it right now. And so I don't like it at this moment. I don't want to sound like a hypocrite, but right now I don't like it. So I wish there is a, a way we can look at it and try to figure out is there another option for that. 
A reminder to media on Zoom, if you have a question, please use the uh, raise hand feature. Let's go in the back for our next question on the aisle. Hi, Kevin. Adam Teicher from ESPN. What tells you that the team from the last couple of weeks, the one that's won seven in a row, is really who you are and not the team that lost seven of nine ahead of that? Well, I don't, I don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do win seven games in a row in college basketball if that's not your identity. And I think that's what tells us who we are. You know, I go back to it, think about this now. You go into every game knowing that if you lose, that you're packing up and your season's over. You know, it's gonna, it's probably gonna be a long time since someone, you know, uh, goes in on a Tuesday in the ACC tournament and wins a championship on Saturday. Um, I hope it is because it's a fun experience and hopefully someone else will, will be able to do that. The other part of it is, you know, going into the tournament, we were 11, we were a 10 seed in the ACC. NCAA, we were 11 seed. And if you watch us, we don't play like that. Um, our guys believe we don't look at numbers. Uh, we just believe that, you know, uh, we earned the right to be here. A lot of teams because of um, maybe the net and also they're good teams. They're here, but we had to do it the old-fashioned way. We had to earn it. We had to go through our tournament, and it's almost like you know my days at UNCW. In order for me to go to the tournament, I had to win the the CAA tournament, and we did it. And that was three days in a row. So I go back and look at it. Like to to your to your question is, you just don't accidentally get hot and and win games seven games in a row with the type of teams that you play. I think we've had in that stretch maybe three or four top 25 teams, maybe even top 10, and we responded well. We will stay in the back on the right. Hey, Coach, this is Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. I've got two for you. The first one's quick, uh, but what shoes did you bring to Dallas, and are you <laughs> mixing it up? No, not mixing it up. I got the same shoes that I wore, and um, I got some shiny, some really shiny shoes. It's an honor to referees, so they, they know to give me good calls because we <laughs> both got shiny shoes on. And um, to the Wall Street Journal, uh, that's pretty good. I saw a, someone send me a, a, um, a picture or a screenshot of DJ Burns on the cover of it, or if it was a cover of the sport, I don't know what it was, but I shout out to you guys for that. Yeah, we, we wrote about DJ uh, not too long ago, but kind of in that vein, that um, one thing I'm curious about is NC State is a proud program with a history of kind of going on these magical runs in the tournament before, and obviously, the 1983 team probably stands out as being one of those teams that's just iconic in March Madness history. So is that something where you've been sort of educating this current team on the history of that? And have any of the players from that year reached out and tried to talk to the guys? No, our, our, our players from 74 and 83, uh, they have been on campus through my tenure, and in, including this year. And look, I can't say enough about them and what they pour into our players. You know, they've been in practices. We've honored them, which we should. We should continue to do that. But anytime those guys are around, David Thompson, Monty Tao, um, you know, you know, everybody who's come through, they've done a good job. Even I, I get text messages from, you know, Sidney Lowe, Thurl Bailey. Um, of course, Derek Wittenberg works there. I mean, it's just – I mean, they're so excited about uh, what's happening, and they're always sharing their experience about 83 and, um, you know, how great it was and, you know, the magical run. And I think our guys listen to that. I mean, they do. Uh, we try to focus on, you know, being who we are now. It's a little bit different than when they went through, but it's certainly paying off for us. Almost out of time for Coach. Any other questions? I don't think I see it. Okay, last question in the back. Hi, Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. You told me uh, recently that the offensive improvement over the last seven games has to do with caring and sharing. Can you break that down? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, when we – guys like Michael O'Connor has really helped our team, you know, as a pure point guard. Because what it's completely done is it's allowed everybody else to be themselves. You know, DJ Horn, we need him to score the basketball. Casey Morsell, we need him to score the basketball. DJ um, Burns and, and Mo, And, you know, when we get Michael in there who is, you know, starting to look for his offense a little bit more, but more of a pass-first guy, I think that's really helped. DJ Burns has helped. Um, his ability to pass out of double teams. 
I mean, the guy may see more double teams than anybody I remember in recent history, and and people are doing it different ways. They're trapping post to post, from guard to guard, I mean, guard to big, and uh, he's finding people. So we have shared the basketball, and we have taken – we went from taking good shots to great shots because of our ability to share the basketball. And I think that's, uh, that's really helped our team. And, you know, when you get into any type of postseason, um, bad shots crush you. And in our situation, we haven't done that. You know, these guys are completely played together, and they really have shared the basketball. So sharing is caring, and caring is sharing too. All right, Coach, thank you so much. And, Thanks, guys. Uh, good luck tomorrow. We'll, we'll see you again soon. Thank you. Thank 24 you, 24 hours, maybe. Is it 24 hours? Something like that. All right, see you. <laughs> thank you. Y'all be good. Thanks a lot. Okay, the student athletes from uh, North Carolina State will be here in just a bit. They have left their locker room and are heading toward our stage. In just a second. Okay, we are now joined by our three student athletes from uh, NC State, uh, DJ Horn, Casey Morsell, and DJ Burns. Questions for our three guys, please raise your hand. We'll bring the mic over and this session will last for approximately 15 minutes. First question. Guys, I think we will have one on your left on the front row will be our first question. Kyle Boone with CBS Sports. Uh, you guys lost seven of your last nine regular season games. Go and win five games, five games in five days at the ACC tournament. Now you guys are in the Sweet 16. Uh, what changed? What uh, what helped you guys turn things around here? I'd say our defensive mentality. I think that we've been playing um, way more together. Um, teams aren't able to just drive our gaps like they were, and they aren't just able to straight line drive us like they were. I think that we've tightened up in that aspect for sure. Um, yeah, I agree with DJ. Um, I think another big key for us is that we're not beating ourselves. Um, you know, we're uh, you know we're not our own worst enemy. Uh, we're we're clicking, but um, you know the defense is you know one of our biggest priorities. But uh, you know we're we're kind of holding teams to one shot, one and done, and um, just doing different things so that uh, it, it makes it tough for the opponent. Yeah, I agree with both of them. Uh, you know, we're not beating ourselves, and uh, the defensive level intensity has increased. Um, and I think that just plays into, uh, you know, the focus level and um, just the connectedness all together um, for our team and our program has just increased. And that's what uh, translates to the wins. And on the right side up front. For all three of you, you all three transferred in at different times. What was the experience when you first got to NC State? And then as a transfer, how did that impact how you would welcome in the rest of you guys as you came in? Let's start with DJ Horn and then move down the table. Um, you know, I was, you know, being from Riley, I was a little familiar with NC State, but, you know, never in the program. But so coming here, I had knew some of the guys in the program. Um, so it felt a little bit better coming in from day one. But um now that I'm here, um, I would say it feels a lot different, especially with all the recent success we, we found and everything. So I would say it's, it's been great. Casey? Uh, <laughs> um, I would say uh, coming in um, to state, this is my third year here. Um, and, uh, you know, when I first got to state, um, our season was um, very unsuccessful. Um, you know, we only had four wins in the conference. And, um, you know, I feel like after that season, we've just gotten better and better. Last year, having a tournament appearance, finishing sixth in the league, and then this year, um, advancing this far. So, um, the fact that we've gotten better and better um, since I've been there, or since I've been in, in Raleigh, um, it's just been a it's been a great journey. It's been a roller coaster in terms of emotions, a lots of up and ups and downs. Um, but Raleigh is uh, in a great position. Um, now that this is my last run. 
DJ? I say um, my experience when I first got here was a little different. Um, I was playing behind your sign, and you know, I was. It was my opportunity to be patient. Um, when I first came here, I I asked God to you know give me the opportunity to learn patience, and He put me right into it immediately when I came here. And um, I think that it's it's paid off now, but it was definitely a different experience from these guys coming in. Reminder to media on Zoom: if you have a question, please utilize the uh, raise hand feature. Next question here on your left, toward the middle. Uh, Scott Grodsky, CBS Milwaukee, uh, for DJ Burns. You guys have been outscoring opponents, I think, by 34 uh, in the, the tournament so far, down in the paint. What kind of challenges do uh, Oso Iguodaro and, and David Joplin uh, present for you? Uh, they're two guys who have the ability to shoot as well. Well, um, I forget. I don't forget how to pronounce his name, so I'm not going to try to do that and you know say something crazy, but. They um they both they both bring a presence being you know as tall as they are and as long as they are you know they're really good at um doing the things that they do you know like rolling and dunking the ball you know the the floaters in the middle you know they got a lot of good players and they got a lot of good pieces together but they're bigs you know they kind of bring them together. Okay, now here on the aisle, uh, Lily Zell, Fox Six Milwaukee. Kind of going out that question for any of you guys um, when you're looking at film of Marquette and, and watching games just. What kind of challenges do they present? Casey, you want to take that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would say they uh, they test your defensive awareness. Um, they, they do so many actions. Uh, one of the different things they do is, you know, uh, they use the, the five man as a ball handler. Um, they set screens, they, they cut, and, um, you know, they, they do different things on the perimeter with the five man. So. Um, I feel like everyone's going to be a, at some point ha is going to guard the perimeter, um, and you know we're, we're just going to be a lot of different um, actions and, and rotations that we we kind of got to be aware for um, that they do. Okay, toward the back. Hey there, um, Lane Higgins from the Wall Street Journal. And this is for all of y'all. Um, I'm curious if any of you have any superstitions like your coach with the shoes that he's been wearing every game. Um, is there anything that you guys have been sticking to the last few games as you've been on this hot streak? DJ Burns, why don't you start? We'll come back to DJ on this end. Uh, pretty simple for me. I just use the same playlist. I've added songs to it, but I've had the same playlist since high school that I listened to specifically before games. Um, I would say just before the games, I like to pray, so I keep that very consistent. I think we skipped Casey. You want to respond? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm. I do both. I, I got the same playlist, and I pray before every game. So that's pretty much what's been my routine. Any other questions for uh, the three guys? We do toward the back, on the right side. Skyler Dixon with the AP. DJ Burns, the, the tournament every year seems to create kind of fan favorites through personalities, and you've kind of exuded that on camera just looking from afar. Do you sense that at all, and do you, you feel like you are becoming a bit of a fan favorite? And kind of related to that, has any NIL opportunities come out of what you all have done so far in the tournament? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm not going to speak on the NIL thing just because um, there's still some things that need to be you know finalized before we speak out on it. Um, but as far as the whole fan favorite thing, yeah, I've definitely noticed it. Um, it's been kind of crazy, you know, going from having almost zero media attention to a camera following you around all day has kind of been, it's, it's been cool, but you know, I definitely noticed it. <laughs> Hard to miss it. Okay, here on the right. Yeah, Dan Walken from USA Today. Um, I, I'd like all three to comment on this, but when you're at the ACC tournament on Tuesday, you know, you haven't had the season you wanted to have. I mean, does it really enter your mind that you could go on a run like this or are you just kind of looking at, you know, one one game trying to trying to stay alive? How do, how does that how do you mentally process that when you're, you know, down to that literal last chance to do something? Let's start with DJ Horn and then go down the table. Um, yeah, I, I just feel like we came into that tournament with a uh, new life. We knew that it was a, a new season basically for us to go in there and uh, make something happen. And uh, just looking back over our whole season, we knew that we were a good team and uh, a lot of the teams that we had uh, in our path to get to where we wanted to get to, um, you know, we, we battled with a lot of those teams. So we knew that we could compete and, and win those games. 
Yeah, uh, that's pretty much what it was. Um, we we went into this postseason uh, with the approach that it's a it's a new season. Um, even in our even our in our meeting um, before we went to DC, um, you know, Keats wrote on the board zero and zero. He was like, every team is zero and zero, and um, that was the the mindset and the approach that we went down to DC with. And you know, every game was its own championship. Literally, uh, we didn't really look ahead. We never. Um, you know, look past anyone, even three, four games in, we was until it's done, like, you know, then we'll we'll sit there and enjoy it. And that's the same approach we've had in this tournament. And DJ. Uh I say yeah, I thought we could do it the whole time. I mean, if you look back at the teams that we played to get to that point, you know, um Louisville we played them and took Syracuse to some close games. Um we had already beaten and went to overtime with Virginia, you know, close games for the most part against Duke. Um, so we knew we could do it. It was just a matter of, you know, doing the things that were necessary to get the job done. And then um, I think that we just kind of taken that momentum and kept it rolling. Any other questions? OK, we're approaching the end of this uh, session. We'll go on the right toward the back. Casey, following up on that, how do you think that mentality that you've had to carry since then helps now that the stakes are quite a bit bigger? <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, I would say uh, just don't change. I feel like we've uh, been in so many positions. We've been tested so many times throughout this run um, that, you know, it, it's it's been easy for, for guys to kind of fold and, you know, go or fall into the pressure. Um, and it hasn't happened. And, you know, we just – whatever teams or whatever happens or even on the outside, we just got to kind of keep that same connection for the rest of this tournament. Okay, hey, the last question will go in the back in front of the TV camera. Gary Hahn with the Wolfpack Sports Network. Can you guys, can each of you break down the uh, incredible chemistry that's developed on this team over the last seven games? You said all three? And, and explain it. Yes, yes, sir. Okay, uh, DJ Burns will let you lead off. Uh, I don't know. I think it's. I think it's always been there. I don't think that we... We treat each other differently now. Um, everyone else is just paying attention because we're winning, you know. Um, that's what winning does, though. It's always going to seem like you're a little bit closer together when you're winning. And don't get me wrong, you know, we, we're still building great memories, but I don't think that too many of us, like, I think we mixed well from the time we got together. I think by November, we had a pretty good chemistry going. Casey? Yeah, I agree with DJ. Um, you know, we've been very close um, throughout it all, throughout the good times and the bad. And, um, you know, just because, you know, the results don't show up on the court um, doesn't mean we, we weren't close. It was um, just, you know, just trying to figure everything out. Uh, there was a lot of new faces, a lot of new people trying to adjust to the, you know, to the program, to the culture, and it took it, it took time. Um, and, you know, the fact that we're finally starting to click um, is, is great, and it's great timing. <laughs> and, and DJ? Yeah, I disagree with them, uh, you know. Coming in, I felt like from day one, you know, the vibes were always there on and off the court. Um, and like DJ was saying, you know, you win like how we've been winning anywhere. Uh, it's going to it's gonna bring anybody closer together. So uh, I think the main thing that we'll take from this is just uh, learning, how, learning how to win and learning how hard it is to win as a team uh, so that, you know, after it's all said and done with us, you know, we can kind of set the foundation and hopefully keep that here at NC State. Hey, guys, thanks for spending time with us. Um, appreciate you being here. We will see you tomorrow after the game, okay? Thank you so much. Thank you.